Jesus. Meet you at the point of your needs. Yes, Lord. And God will speak into your life and open the heavens unto you. Mm. It is always a pleasure to have a man of God, a great man of God. He is a father, he's a brother, he's everything. He's an apostle. Apostle to us. And since the Lord brought us together, God through him and since Pied our lives, oh, our ministry. Yeah. And he is a man that we can always thank God for. We will always thank God for him. And he is a, one of the things I love about him is he's very humble. Amen. Humble. Yes. In the community and everywhere. And Papa, we want to thank God for your life. Amen. Let's we study the ovation. Welcome, Apostle Ransford. And now some man. And the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank a wonderful God. I thank my wonderful brothers for the awesome job that they are doing in the vineyard of God. 
God bless you so much, Reverend Adam Grant Senior and Junior, and your family. May the Lord exalt you. Amen. The year by this time, Amen. God told Abraham, I said, the year by this time, oh, Jesus. after I visit again, there shall be a performance. So the year by this time, the Lord's hand shall be lifted up, and God's house shall be more souls and more joy. And people come here and see that healing, deliverance, and blessing from our God. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for such a wonderful day. Today is a, we are in the seventh month of the year. Mm. We have just begun the the half, the last half of the year. Mm. Seven times of perfection. So I bet you that somebody here with us in the, this month to the end of it, the Lord will smile at you. Amen. 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 So uh, the Bible says that. When we were yet sinners, Christ came to die for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He said that as many as believe him to them, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Yes. So any person who claim and confess that he is a believer or a child of God or a Christian or a born again, it means that you are under the calendar of God. So God's eye is on you. God never of his eye to me because you have accepted him as your Lord and presence of so God always comes to you to do his will, to perfect his ways on this earth. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for how far the Lord has brought us. I, I have a friend, I like to say, oh, sorry, that a, a, one of my friends who always he said, according to his religion, according to his religion, he said that he, he disliked that they are they are religion dislike eating pork. Okay? And so one day this my friend visited myself and, uh, and, my, and my, my family. And over there we cook pork uh, pork soup. Pork soup. So we know that he don't like pork. So we didn't invite him to the dinner, right? So what we are eating, this my friend said, oh, bro, what? You didn't invite me. I said, yes, because we do, we don't eat pork. So yes, I know, but I can drink the soup. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, How can you just slice something and drink the, the soup, soup. Of the soup of, of the pork? <laughs> this is unheard of. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. So the thing that you dislike, you don't participate. So it means that that my friend he is not upholding his religious belief. So today, God is God's pleasure to teach us the topic for the day is uphold your Christian values. Amen. Uphold your Christian values. So this my friend did not uphold his Christian or his religious values because you don't eat pork. Why do you want to drink the soup that is prepared for this pork? He could not uphold his, his religious values. But today, God wants you and I to understand that if indeed we claim that we are believers, we are mm. child of God, we are born mm. again genuinely, that we need to uphold our Christian value. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we go to our main text? Genesis chapter 25, verse number 20, 10. Verse number 10 to 34. Genesis. 25, 25, 10 to 34. I read from 30 to 34. Uh, verse 29, it says, Now Jacob conquered you. Yeah, okay, yeah. And Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. Hallelujah. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with the same red steel, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and steel of lentils. Then he ate and drank arose and went his way. Thus Esau's despised his birth. Right. Hallelujah. 
Esau despised his birthright. We are talking about uphold your Christian values. And this story is popular in any Christian home concerning Jacob and his brother called Esau. And the Bible says that Esau, as a hunter, has come from his hunting business. And when he got home, he was so uh, he was so hungry. And luckily, he found his junior brother cooking pottage or stew or food, whatever, whatever. And this guy called Esau said, "Can you feed me with your some of your pottage or your food? What is my reason? My reason that I am starving. I am hungry." And in verse number 30, 31, 31, and Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Sell me this day your birthright. You know, in all things day, or even in this present day, people that don't understand the birthright. Birthright is an honor given to any fair child of any fair son of any family. It's an honor and it also comes with a blessing. So, best right for a fair son is should not be underestimated. Should not be just surrendered just like that. You need to keep it, protect it, because it, because it is an honor that is given to any fair son of any family. Mm. So, here is Esau said, Jacob said, if you want to enjoy my seal or my soul, then first. Sell me your birthright. Uh -huh. And because of starvation and because of hungry, and Israel did not ponder or consider the benefit that goes with first point or the first uh, or the birthright. Oh, Jesus. So when he, Jacob made that statement that sell me this day your birthright, let's hear what Israel said in verse 32. And he said, and Israel said, Behold, I am at the point of death. And what profit shall this birthright do for me? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I am at the point of death. I am starving and I am about to die. Mm. How can this birthright do for me or save me? So over here, Esau did not consider the benefit and the honor and the blessing that go with the birthright. Because in, if you were first born as a, as a son, and you are a son, this is one of the benefit. You can be a leader in your family. Mm. And when, you also have a double portion of your family's inheritance. Mm. So when your father died as a first born son, you have a double portion of your father's inheritance. That is how, that was happening in those days. So, as a friend, but you don't just on the estimate your right. So, Esau did not understand the benefit or did not consider the benefit that goes with the first bond. And he said, send me your best right. And he said, oh, what shall this best do to me? Because I'm about to die because I'm starving. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore and unto him. And he sold his birthright. Oh my goodness. Mm. So, child of God, you claim to be a Christian. That's wonderful. You claim to be a child of God. That's wonderful. You claim to be a born again. That's wonderful. But over here, when a spirit arises, like this whole situation, do you also, through your, through your emotion, through your anger, through your salvation, through your emotions, did you also sell your birthright? You have come it. Child of God. Therefore, as Christ said, He is the firstborn among the dead. Therefore, we are partakers of Christ's death. We are partakers of Christ's benefit. We are partakers of Christ's salvation. We are partakers of whatever Christ do for us. Therefore, as a child of God, consider yourself as a firstborn in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever comes to you, either good or bad, you don't have to listen to your emotion. You don't have to listen to your, 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 your desire. You have to think and rethink again and consider the benefit that goes with your best right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Once you have accepted the challenge to be a child of God, once you have accepted the challenge to be a believer, then definitely there shall be salvation to you in your way. There shall be hungry, 
that will occur to you. There shall be so many things that shall occur to you. But whenever you go to temptation, whenever you go to challenges, whenever you go to starvation, whenever you go to hungry, whenever you go to thirsty, do not do become, become like the Esau. Don't ever sell your birthright. Amen. But there are benefits that go with the birthright, I mean, with the birthright as the son or the firstborn of the family. So your Christian value is very, very important. You need to uphold your Christian value because it doesn't matter the school system. Because whenever you're able to stand stay or stay put and you do not give in and or surrender or or go down, definitely you will overcome that temptation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we all know this example about this guy called Job. Job is a man of faith. Job is a child of God like you and I. Today I'm talking about believers, Christians. So if you want to uphold your Christian belief, see the example of Job. Job go to challenges, Amen. which no any other person on earth today can bear that challenges. Mm. A man within a day, he lost all his business empire, he lost all his children, even his friends spoke against him, and even his own wife spoke that he must curse God and die. Mm. That's so unbearable, that Job went through. But in all those circumstances, in all those challenges, Job did not sin against God, but what? He uphold his Christian values. Yes. So if you are a Christian, today God is telling you that whatever you go through, any bitterness, mm. any challenges, oh, any depression, oh, any agonies, oh, any downs and ups that you go through, make sure that you try as much as you can to uphold your Christian values. Because when you throw in the towel, you can never see the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if so, did not value his birthright and he sold his birthright and we all know the sorrow that happened after after that he lost the leadership in the family instead of him to become a leader in the family he returned or he gave up his leadership onto his junior brother and Jacob became the leader in that family and his name became Israel till today mm. hallelujah Amen. so child of God it doesn't matter what you will be uphold the Christian value. Uphold the Christian Jesus had I mean, been betrayed. Jesus had been hung on the cross. Mm. They came to him, the soldiers. If you say you are Christ, deliver yourself. Mm. He quite said, you do, you do save people. Why can't you save yourself? Mm. They mock at him. They tease him. But in all those in Christ said, Father, do forgive them. Uh, they do not know what they do. Amen. Jesus uphold his Christian value. So, child of God, if we are following Christ Jesus, we need to be careful the way we speak, the way we react, the way we do in any area of our life. Because God is watching. If you claim as a believer, whatever you do, either in secret or in open, God is over there watching. watching. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, as we claim to believe it, to uphold your Christian value is very, very important because if you are a believer and you fail to honor God in, in the open, it means you are dishonoring God. Because whosoever that to honor God in the open, it means you can never claim to be a believer. Oh, yes. God is not a secret thing that we serve. God or worshiping God is not a secret thing. You can never worship God in your secret. You can never worship God in your, in your room alone. It's an open business. It's an open worship. Wherever you go, you need to show that you are a believer or a child of God. Therefore, you need to uphold the Christian values. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to something. The core of your Christian values. Mm. Before you can value or uphold your Christian values, you need to understand or you need to have the core that can support or that can uphold you in, this, in, in that value. Amen. Number one core is that Faithfulness. To uphold your Christian world, you need to be faithful. Oh yes. Faithfulness is the one of the core that can uphold you, that can help you to what? To I mean to, uh, to to value or to uphold your Christian world. Because Christians are being attacked as a child of God. Any believer has a tap on him or her. Mm. Any believer oh, has yes. a tap on him or her. Oh, yes. So if you do good, 
God is glorified. If you do bad, Satan is glorified and people mock at your God, not even not you. Yes. And God becomes so ashamed. Oh, like 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 Satan reports uh, report to God. You are blessed, Job, Job, because you have hands around you. That's why he worships you. That's why he fears you. So whatever Christians do, do in, in this world, either good or bad, there are going to be consequences. So yeah. every believer, to uphold a Christian world, you need some sort of core, 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 that is the faithfulness, is the one of the core that you need to use to uphold your Christian world. Let's see what happened to this guy called Daniel in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. Verse 3 and 4. Daniel chapter 6. I read yes, verse 3 and 4 from the King James Version. Then this Daniel was preferred above, above the president and the prince because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Yes. Then the president and the prince sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. That they could find none occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault find in him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking uphold your Christian values. And we are saying that there are core that you should have to support or to uphold your Christian values. Amen. The core of your Christian values. We are saying faithfulness is number one. And the book of Daniel 6, 3 says that this, then this Daniel was preferred above the president and the princesses because, because an excellent spirit was, was in him. So Daniel he is, in, he is in captivity. He is bonded. Yes, sir. He did not hide his cow that he had. He openly confessed God even in a strange land. So wherever Daniel goes, he goes with his God. And because of his religion, the people in that city, he is a, a, I mean, a stranger in, in, a, in, a, a captive, in, in captivity. But still, he did not forget his God. So the people combined to accuse him, to, scout, to try to fight for uh, against him. And the Bible says, because there is something called excellent support was found in him. Mm. Excellent support. So any believer, whatever you are doing, who so how we call yourself, you need to have that support called excellent support. It means yes. that there are some spirit which are not excellent, which, which can be dishonest excellent. Yes. It can be excellent or unexcellent spirit. spirit. So if not good, it's going to be bad. Right. If not wicked, it's going to be good, whatever. So the Bible says that because an excellent word was in him mm -hmm. and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Oh, so now Jesus. Daniel was in captivity. He was upholding his Christian values. Mm -hmm. Because of that, he found favor before the, the king. Mm -hmm. And the king said, because I see you that you are an honest man, you are a genuine man, you don't, you don't have your God, therefore I see some, a good spirit in you. Therefore I am able to promote you, to send you above the problem, and you shall be the, the prey of that problem. Oh yes, because Daniel was upholding his Christian values even in a strange land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, child of God, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. Mm. Don't forget to always try as much as you can to uphold the Christian values. Okay. It doesn't matter yeah. the that. It doesn't matter the hardship, doesn't matter the, the tribe. A poor Daniel was in your captivity. Yes, sir. He did not he, he did not overlook. He did not reject, but he abhorred in his And the, the king saw that this guy had an essence for And the first said that then the president and the president sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the king has seen. So I'm good good in this that boy called Daniel. But the among the leaders, the the concern for him, they are trying to I mean I mean I mean, I mean to, to pull him down. Yeah, yeah. The fishing killers, mm. the enemies mm. in that in the, I mean they may so for they take it for the king. Oh, they say no, king, you can't do that. This guy is not correct. You think no, this guy is some 
Familiar spirit. It's not yeah. a good spirit. It's a very, it's a devil. He's in captivity. How can he do that? So the people connive. And then they brought him. They planned. Mm. They con concord and came together oh, and said, Cain, may you live forever. Oh, I heard Jesus. that you are trying to promote this man called Daniel. Mm. Are you sure he's a good man? No, I don't think so. So they set him a trap. Daniel passed the trap. They set him another one. He passed. They set so many traps against him. They bite him. They report him to the king. He said, No, I don't believe you. And they, they, call, they call Daniel. And Daniel proved to the king that I am not a bad person. So any report that they report to the king, Daniel passed the test. Hallelujah. Amen. Why is he passing the test? Because he's holding his Christian values. So whenever you find yourself, either in captivity, or in strange land, or in business, or in marriage, or in your house, whatever you want to say yourself, try as much as you can to uphold your Christian value. And you must have this call, faithfulness. And what he liked with that, but they could not find an occasion, nor fault, for as much as he was faithful. That's the word I want. Amen. He was what? Faithful. faithful. That is the call that can help you to uphold your Christian value. Yes. Faithfulness, faithfulness is very important faithful. in your Christian life. Any Christian or any believer who comes to be born again, who is not faithful, you can never oh, yes. praise God. Amen. If anything that we do on earth, faithfulness is very important. Faithfulness is very, very important. Because if in marriage, if you if you don't faithful, you can't be faithful. Oh yes. You can never you succeed in marriage. Succeed, yes. So faithfulness is a core in so many things on this earth. Oh yes. God said, Oh, Abraham. Abraham don't worry. The year by this time, the year by this time, oh, God, I have forgotten. 25 years ago, you promised me, you prophesied that, oh, I will be the father of the nation. Look here, I am. I don't have strength of my own. The Damascus, the, I mean, Elysium for Damascus, he with my head. God said, no, you got it all wrong. He said, God, said, God are you sure? I don't have any child of my own. Mm. Only the servant in my heart, God, Elysium. He is the one you're going to inherit me when I die. God said, oh, are you sure? It's okay, yes. He said, my friend, come out. Watch the star. Mm. Look the heaven. Yes. Count the stars. Count if you star. can count it, then so be it. But if you can't count it, then so shall you see. Oh, yes. And the Bible says, everyone believe and it will count it as, well as righteousness. Amen. Faithfulness. The guy has not seen the miracle, but he believed. Believe it. Amen. Faithfulness. So, the core of a Christian person is a faith and belief and have faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two core that you need in this Christian value. Love. Love. Say love. Love. Let's go to the book of First Corinthians chapter 13. As we all know that. That's Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Yes, 1 to 3. First Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. I read from the King James Version. Do I speak with the tongues of men mm -hmm. and of angels? Yes. Have no charity or love. I am become a sounding brass oh, Jesus. or a tinkle chamber. Yes. And do I have the gift of prophecy? Oh, yes. Understand all mysteries mm -hmm. and all knowledge. Amen. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have no love, I am nothing. And though I restore all my goodness to feed the poor, mm -hmm. and though I give my body to be burned and have no love, it, proof not, it, it, it profits me nothing. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking about uphold your Christian value. And we are saying that there are some calls that you need to be able to uphold your Christian value. And at first we said your faithfulness is very important. To be able to uphold your Christian value, you need to be faithful. Number two thing that you need to have is love. And the book that Paul wrote to us in the first Corinthians 2 uh, states, he said that Personally, the door, if I speak with the tongue of men and of an angel and I have not love, I 
I became a, a sounding blast or tickling symbol. This is how Paul says. Oh, 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 you call yourself, you love this, you love this man, you call yourself, you like this brother, you call yourself, you love this, your wife or your, or your, or your husband, and that if so, is good. But the Bible is saying that if you have a tongue of men, you can speak tongues more than everybody in the whole world. Yeah. You can even speak tongues more than, uh, more than in the gateway in heaven. Mm. You can speak a sound language. If in the whole world you can, they can say you are the wise person. You are so oracle. You can speak oracle like, like, like Mephibosheth. It doesn't matter. But if you have all those things, you can speak loving, you can speak sensibly, you can speak like, like, uh, 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 so sound that, that people say that you are a child of God. All those things that it matters, fine. But Bible says if you have no love, you become like a sounding symbol. It's like they say that an empty barrier makes what? The most, the most, the most noise. noise yes. Is this how you become? So, for you to uphold your Christian food, you need to have this call love. You can never pretend to love your neighbor and that, and that you backbite him behind. You can never say that I love my wife and that you cheat on her. Oh. You can never say that I love my children and that you don't, you, I, I don't care for them. Oh. You can never say that I love my nation and that you corrupt the, the system. You can never say that. So Bible says that if you have a, a tongue like an angel, you speak like an angel, you speak like all the men with heavy tongues, you heavy tongues and you still you have no love, you gain nothing, you have nothing. You become like a sounder, uh, just blast, just wow. making noise. Mm. And he said that, and though if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountain and have no charity, I have nothing. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, simple explanation, self explanation. We are talking about how to uphold your Christian belief. Uphold it means this uh, one. Yes. The love of God. I'm talking about the agape love. Yes. Not the filial love. Not Eros love. Not unconditional love. That's what I'm talking about. The agape love. So if you have the gift of prophecy, you can prophesy that tomorrow there shall be bush fire in the whole world. Oh, tomorrow there shall be no rain. In the next 10 years, there shall be no way. The sun will stand still like Joshua did. Oh, yes, it can be like Elijah. Professor, that oh, three and a half years, there shall be no way in the whole world that you can do that all fine. And you say that, oh, you you have understanding, to understand all mystery, you can prophesy, you can give the word of knowledge, you can do so many things that it is well, it is good, it is accepted. But all in all those things, God is saying that if that is not done with love, you are nothing. Amen. You may have the faith to move mountains. You may have the faith to drive the sea. You may have the faith to, to, to command that let this river be parted like Elijah did. And sir, you have no charity or you have no love. Bible says you are nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So to uphold your Christian value, you need love. You need love. Love. Love your neighbor as yes. yourself. The Bible says that. If one has love, love covers what? The multitude of sin. If you have love, you have fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. Amen. If one has love, you have what? Fulfilled the law. Yes, Lord. Love is very important in our Christian life and as also in our, our daily life. Every person, either you are a believer or not a believer or Christian or not a Christian, you need to love one another. one another. Love your nation. Love Amen. your brother. Love your sister. Love your children. Love your husband. Love your wife. Love your colleagues. Love your mate. Love your colleagues. This is what God is telling us. So you need, as a believer, you need this call. If you want to uphold your Christian values. Hallelujah. Amen. And God said that, and though I bestow all that, all my good, and I feed the poor, and though I give my body to the pain, and have no love, I profit. It profit means nothing. Mm. That's wonderful. You may claim that, oh yes, I'm a rich man. 
I'm a believer and I said the word of God and God knows me. When I pray, God answers me. When I fall, God is surprising. When I open my eyes, I see God in, in open vision. Yes, you may have those things. And the Bible says that even you may have more money to feed the poor. You may even give up your boat to pay to save somebody like that Jesus did. He came and said for himself. Yes, you may have you can be able to do that. And the Bible says that if you have all those things and you still you have no love, you are nothing. There's no profit for you. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. The child of God, I hold the Christian world. You need this call. Faithfulness and what you, you need love. love to be yes. able to uphold the Christian world. Number three thing that we need is the light of the word. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 13 to 16, as we all know. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew. I read from the King James Version 13 to 16. 16. Say, Ye are the salt of the earth. Amen. But if the salt have lost its summer, mm -hmm. wherewith shall it be salt? It is therefore good for nothing, but be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a brochure, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine before men, yes, Lord. that they may see your good works. Mm -hmm. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I call the Christian the core of your value is the light, you are the light of the world. Oh, Jesus. To, you, have, you must have this call to, to be able to uphold your Christian ruling. Your Christian ruling. You are the light of the world. And the Bible you are the sword of the world. Mm. But if the sword lost its favor, if favor, where shall it be sorted? Mm. It is therefore good for nothing. Mm. But it cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. So tell God. To be able to uphold the disciple, God says that you must understand and know that you are the you are the light and the salt of the weather. So yeah. the Bible is explained to us that as a salt of the weather, you we all know what is called salt. Salt, the reason and the purpose of so that salt give taste to what to food. Mm. Salt is used for what for preservation. Amen. If you want something not to decay, you will sort to preserve it. Preserve it, yes. To, to, to prevent yes. decay. Mm. So now, God is comparing you as a Christian, not the unbeliever, you the Christian. God is saying that you are the sword of the world. And you need to give taste to the world. Because when you visit me and I cook you a nice food, and the food is tasteless, no salt, and I serve you, you will complain. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. You will complain. Mm. If you marry a, a wonderful wife, oh, you have done your wedding, the first food that your wife cooked for you, he said, oh, hello, my name. Today is from Money Moon. We are coming. Oh, I've go, let's go to the dining table. The wife, your wife has set the table, and then you sat down. You are so proud. Come here. Eat your wife's first food ever, and then sat on the table, and then you you and they put the nip on your neck, and then they start to take your fork and you pray over the food and oh my god, and what a delicious food that you are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you start trying to honor the food even than than, than the God. This is a nice food, <laughs> nice food. Oh honey, you are wonderful. You haven't even taken the food though. You are praising the woman. You are a wonderful woman. See your food. See this. Oh, this is what? This is after a dessert. Oh, this, you, you, you start praising the woman. Then the game starts. First shot. Ah, you uh. missed the mark. <laughs> you squeeze your face. What will you say to your wife? You say, oh, honey, what happened? The food is tasteless. You need to complain. No woman, the husband will, not, will keep quiet on this. Yes. No husband will keep crying. Oh, yes. You will definitely need to complain to your wife. So the same applies to you and your God. As a son, when you fail to give taste to the world, 
God needs to complain. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the food, the food is the well. And you are the sword. And the giver of the sword and the word is, is God. Somebody hearing me? Amen. The food stands for the word. Mm. The sword stands for you, the Christian. Mm. The giver of the word and the sword is your God. Therefore, God is the one who can recommend or praise you. Like a husband praising or displacing his, his wife. So if you were a believer, a born again, spoken, a tongue speaking child, and then you fail to give taste to the word. And the word becomes un unpalatable. The Bible says that when the food is tasteless, no one will be able to, uh, to eat the food. The two things we need to be cautious here. Either the food can be tasteless it, or, or can be tasteful. Mm -hmm. When it's tasteless, it cannot be eaten. It cannot be eaten. Over tasteful, it cannot be eaten. So it should be what? It should be normal. Normal. Yes. Yes. You take your man. I said, you take your man. Yes. You might solve this. You destroy everything. Yes. So yes. this is what God is saying. If you are a believer, mm. need you should know how to taste the word. Yeah. Wherever you go as a child of God, because you are a son, people must find the reason to taste your speech that will come out of you. Thank you. Your speech is your sword. Your ashes is the sword. Your behavior is the sword. So. Your character is the sword. Mm. Your habit is the sword. Your compulsion is the sword. Whatever you do is your the sword that you're putting into the world. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So ask yourself, what are my actions mm. between me and my Very important. Friend? Very important. What are my character between me and my fellow Christian or my friend or my colleague? What are my attitude when I meet a stranger? What are my character between me and my children? What are my, uh, I mean, my attitude or action that portray between me and my God? You must ask this question mm -hmm. yourself. Your soul is your action. Amen. The soul is your character. Yes. The soul is your behavior. The soul is your action that you do. And the world is watching. Mm. When somebody goes astray, it means that you are poisoning the person that is sought. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. When somebody fails to accept the Lord Jesus Christ because of you, you have not been a good sword. You have poisoned the person's mind and you have become a wasteful sword. So the Bible says, when the sword loses its savor, it was cast out and betrayed by the foot of men. Mm. So, child of God, don't let God speak badly about you. Lord, don't let people also speak badly about your God. Always try as much as you can to be tasteful to the word. Yeah, so, I say that you know that now God is telling that, and I understand this subject. Mm. The word is. The food that you need to put it so inside. And the Bible to say that, and then you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. Amen. And you are the light to uphold the Christian faith. Know yourself that you are the light. These are the call that you need to uphold and to know and to understand that you are the light. So, person, a city on the hill. Can never be hidden. Oh Jesus! You are the light of the world. So, verse fifteen. He said, ne "Neither do men light a candle and put it on a basher, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that in the house." So, as you are a child of God, as you represent Christ, as you represent the light of the world. The Bible says that who can light a candle and put under the under the table? It's never done. No sensible person who light a candle and put it under the table. The reason is that it cannot give light. But you need to have put on the top of the table to do what to give light. So now, as a believer, God is saying that you are the light. So wherever the light travels, what distance? Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. The light travels far away, miles away. So whenever you, when you board an aeroplane, when the plane takes off, and then you see, 
you see the light in the city. The light is up. So definitely you're going to see. So whenever you go to another continent and you see the light in the uh, you are you are, you are going to you, you have seen some city or some uh, town around. Mm. The same must be your character. Mm. Wherever you go, where the darkness, when you appear there, because you are the light, there must be a light. Because always light, darkness cannot comprehend the light. Oh yes. Always the light is extinguished. The light is exception. Whenever the darkness, when the light appears, the, the light must what run away. Yes. This must be your character. This must be your values. This must be how to uphold the Christian world. God has placed food on you. Don't on his meeting. You are the light. Yes. Not a small thing. It's not a joke. Mm. For God to make you the light of the world. Can you imagine? Who are you? You are just a man, a mortal being. But still, God takes the light to make you the light. So shine as a light. Mm. Let your light bring light to the people. Amen. Because the city that is on the head cannot be hidden. Cannot be hidden. So, child of God, these are the call that you need to uphold the Christian world. Amen. And we see that, that let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works. So, it shows that when your light shine, when the light shine, always you go to the good works. So, when the light doesn't shine, what do they see? Your bad works. Bad works. Mm. So, any Christian, when you fail, to shine, people will see your bad best. But whenever you shine, people will see your good best. So when the people see your good work happening, they will give the glory to, you, to your Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. So why do you allow people to dishonor your God? Because you have failed to shine like this, mm. like, a, like a light. Let your light so shine before me that they will see your good best. And they will give glory unto your Father. So as a believer, I came to tell you that from today, change your character, Amen. change your thinking, Amen. change your perception, change your behavior. Amen. Amen. God. Be like the light of the way that shine. Amen. So that people will know that your Father that is God. Be like Christ. Amen. Shine. So they will see your good way. They will give glory unto your Father, not you. Mm. Hallelujah. The third, the third thing you need to know, spiritual growth. Mm. The core oh. that you oh. need. Is you need the spiritual group. Let's go to the book of First Peter, verse two, one and two. First Peter, chapter two. First Peter, chapter two, one and two. He said, "Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guilt, hypocrites, enviness, and all evil speaking." As newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. Amen. The verse is very important. So now we are talking about uphold your Christian belief. And we are saying that there are some core that goes with the values. You can never have value if you don't have a core to support it. So we say that to have a core, you need to have faith to be faithful. You might, you might have love and also you must be the light of the world. And now we are saying that spiritual growth to uphold the Christian world, you need, it. you need to grow spiritually. So Peter is saying to us in Peter, first Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Let's use the verse 2. Say, as newborn baby, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. Amen. That you may grow thereby. So it means that, child of God, education has no end. That's what they used to say. Mm. And it's true. You can even chew the Bible into your head from cover to cover. That doesn't mean that you stop reading the Bible. So God is saying that as a newborn baby, meaning as a child of God, to uphold the Christian values, don't stop reading. Don't stop growing spiritually because when you fail to read, when you fail to pray, when you fail to fight, you are not growing spiritually, but you are growing physically. Amen. So God is saying that as a believer, as a child of God, as a born again, God said that desire the sincere man, which is the word of God. Say the word of God to approve that you are a child of God. Oh, so that we're able to grow. Growth is very important. Yes. Growth is continuous business. Mm. Ask yourself. Why do we work? Mm. Why do we make money? Mm. Have you ever seen any billionaire stop to make money? No. He's a 
Valentine's Day, he may have billions of dollars in the world. Yeah. Still he works. Yeah. Still he do work. This is how it goes. You can never claim that you were a prophet or an apostle or a pastor or a sing leader or a choir star or youth leader or women's fellowship or so from my men, whatever you call yourself. That doesn't mean that you should not grow. Mm. Continue to grow. Not to grow. Grow and grow and grow and grow. Amen. And grow. Hallelujah. Amen. Special growth is very important. Amen. These are the core that goes with how to uphold your Christian values. Because God has put value on you. Therefore, you need to uphold it. Lastly, then we are done. The last point is righteousness. Righteousness. Go to the book of Romans. Then we are done. Righteousness is Romans chapter 6, right? Verse 6. Romans, verse 12. Chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Verse 12 and the verse 13. Let's see it over. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey in you should obey it in the last thereof. Neither yield you your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God, as though that are alive from dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. The core of the value that we are talking about. We say that you need to have be faithful, you need to have love, you need to be have be the light of the world, you need to have special group. And lastly, we say that righteousness. So the Bible is said, saying to us in Romans 6, Romans 6 uh, 12 says that let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That you should obey it in the last day of. Don't allow sin to rule over your body. Don't allow sin. So it means that sin can rule like a present rule in a nation. So when sin rules in your body, you become unprofitable. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Your Christian values become useless. You say things you're supposed not to say. When sin is ruling your body, you do things you're supposed not to do. You say things you're supposed not to do. You behave supposed things you're supposed not to behave. You will become so awkward, become so unprofitable before God. So God is saying that don't allow yourself, don't allow yourself to be ruled by the sin because of the wrath. I like the verse 13. Neither yield your members as instrument for unrighteousness. That is that is very, very important. Like a devil said, like my friend who doesn't like pork, eat pork, but he likes to eat the soup, drink the soup. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. He hates the pork meat, but, love the soup. but he loves soup cooked with pork. Can you imagine? <laughs> so this is why God is saying that neither yield your members as instrument for correction. So maybe you are Christian. Somebody is looking for a job and the person is so desperate and as a believer you need to offer an assistant or help and then so I can help you but that officer will take some pride can you give me some 200 dollars so I can give to that officer so he can employ you you have to yield your moment as an unrighteousness so yeah. God said that don't let I yield, don't give up your moment, mm. what are your moments? The moment is the, the feature of your body. Oh, yes. Your hand, your mouth, your head, your mind, your, your tongue, every member of your body is very important. Yes. So God said that don't you, don't let your mouth speak evil, 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 evil against your neighbor. Mm. So anybody who is a believer, you need to uphold your members very, very well. Oh, yes. Put them on a subjection. Because if you don't do so, God said that. You are using your members as instrument for unrighteousness, and God does not like that. And he said that, but yield your members unto God. Yield your members unto God. Surrender. Give up your members. Let your hand do the work of God. Let your mouth speak the word of God. Let your eyes be reading the Bible. 
Let your mind stay in the Bible. Let your in, everything in you do the word of God. Let your leg walk to people where you walk to people who need God. This is why God said, "Ye your members, your members of a body to profit God." Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. He said that are those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instrument of righteousness unto God. So, child of God, I came to announce you. Mm. That to uphold your Christian glory, you need to have this core called faithfulness, yes. love, mm. the light of the world, yes. spiritual growth, and finally righteousness. Right. These are the core that you can rely on to, able, to be able to uphold your Christian glory. God is watching you. You are the son of the world. You need to feed the world with the word of God. Do as much as you can. And give the gospel of Jesus Christ, and your life will never be the same again. God bless you, child of God. Wherever you are, may you have a new growth. May you have a new sense of direction. May God reveal unto you that you need to uphold your Christian glory. God knows you. God loves you, and God has appointed you. God has chosen that you must be His child. Therefore, do the will and the work of God. God bless you and keep you and protect you, and may you live and fulfill the word of God. God loves you, man. Hallelujah. Ah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. We are going to, we are going to pray shortly. And uh, somebody give me a song. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our strength. Our strength. Oh, uh-huh. 
That's prayer. We are praying for understanding oh. the core of the Christian values. Amen. If you don't have or understand the core mm. that can support the values, you will miss the map. Mm. Yes, Therefore, we say that you need to be faithful. You oh, need yes. to have love. Mm. You need to be, be, to be the light of the world. You need to grow spiritually. And you also need to live a righteous life. Oh. These are the core that can support you and help you to live and uphold the Christian values. The heavenly Father, according to your word, according to your word, don't that love you, don't that love you, don't that love you, don't that believe you, don't that believe you, give the power, give the power, because the sons of God, therefore, Father, therefore, Father, the word says, in my Christian fellowship, I need, O God, I need, O God, faithfulness, faithfulness, I need, O God, 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 I
to you, Jesus. Rapata Boronda Brianapa, a counter of Boronda Brianapa, a counter of Boronda Brianapa, Rondeva, the counter of Boronda, a papa of Boronda Brianapa, in the name of Jesus, Rapa Pandereva, and the Boronda Brianapa, a Boronda Brianapa, in the name of Jesus. Lastly, I want us to pray as we lead this week everywhere this message somebody will listen oh jesus somebody will draw closer to god in the name of jesus there is a relationship that has been broken between god and that person let this message bring that person back in the name of jesus
uh, counseling and after this message may, maybe somebody want to call you if you can give your number so that they can you speak it in the, your number so that somebody uh, 832-921-6320 again 832 listen this is Apostle Ransford number then you need counseling you need prayer you can call him uh, Apostle once again 832-921-6320 God bless you call us hey our doors are open we, we freely we God has given to us and freely will give. Amen. God bless you. I call Pastor St. Junior to come and lead us to share the benediction. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one. We have, this day has been an awesome morning and awesome afternoon. Uh, God has reigned in his mind and his power. The word of God has come to you and you are blessed this week. This word is a word that is going to take you out throughout the whole week. And let God reign in your life. And let these values of Christ, it is very important to rule in your life, and you shall be blessed. Let's all rise up in the name of Jesus. There shall be showers of blessings. This is a promise of love. God bless you. Very powerful message.